Hello, this is Sven and welcome to the video on Notemation for Beginners. So this is going to be a very small series uh, with a ba very basic workflow and this first video is going to be about this uh, workflow interface. So starting on the left side we have here the main menu with the new open save save as delete download import from url import from file and settings i think most of these are self-explanatory but the settings one will uh, will be important in one of the next videos here is the credentials tab it doesn't say credentials but it has the key so it's pretty obvious so you can uh, make a new credential or open one for example if you want to interact with the dropbox node you can put your credentials from dropbox here and refer to them in the node but there's also another way of putting credentials into here which i will show when we're come uh, when we're going to speak about the nodes themselves <clears throat> and then there's the third one it's called executions and whenever a workflow gets executed you can find it right here on the right side we have this big plus it's the notes tab and the notes are divided into regular and trigger so i think it's uh, more logical to speak about the triggers first because they start a workflow so for example we have here a webhook trigger right here on the bottom it starts a workflow when a webhook gets called so when a certain url gets called the workflow will start and execute whatever is in there um, for example we have here the cron job trigger it triggers the workflow at a specific time i will just put it here for demonstration purposes I can uh, put a cron time, for example, say 14 every day, or say 1420. So it will execute in two minutes from now. So, and um, then we have the regular nodes. For example, we have here a. What do we have here? We have a pipe drive node we have a mailgun node we also have a http request node which is the opposite of the webhook so the the webhook will receive data posted and the http request will send data posted and we also have the send email or uh, uh, spreadsheet file and the trello node and the XML node, for example. So let's uh, make a basic work workflow. Um, for example, I have the cron job, which uh, say, what does it do? It will receive a Google Sheets um, item, and then it will, for example, post it to Trello. So this could be a basic workflow. I didn't uh, put credentials and I didn't uh, choose the data which are going to be processed, but I think the, the main idea gets very clear here. So this one starts at 1420 every day. It will read a Google sheet and it will post the information to Trello. So this concludes, no, this doesn't conclude um, because we, uh, okay, cut this out. So now assume that we made a working workflow. We can now execute it on this, on the bottom here. Uh, this will, um, I cannot execute it right now because I don't have the parameters, parameters set but if i have a working workflow let's say i put a function here so this is working i can execute it oh it starts with a start one um actually it's it gets executed at the certain time 
or I will do it other way. I will do it just like this. There you go. So I will execute it, and then both of these get executed, and you see the data has been processed. I can click in here and have the result. We will get to that later. So on this basic uh, view, we also have uh, we have the execute workflow as. Uh, Whenever we executed the workflow, we can also delete the current ex execution data. For example, now it got deleted, so it's fresh again. And on the top right, we have this activate workflow button, which doesn't work right now because I think there's nothing to um, to do now. So I I need a for example, interval hours. Let's do this instead of the start one. So now we have some okay function. Ah, okay, now I know why. Um, if I have this um, workflow not saved, I cannot activate it. So I need to uh, test workflow. I need to save it first and then activate it. Now it says activate and save, yes, and now it's active and it will execute every four hours and do whatever is behind it. This, In this case, it's a function item, which we will discuss later. So on the uh, bottom left, we have the zoom out and the zoom in. And um, if you happen to have a device uh, with touch, you can also go left and right. I haven't found out uh, how to do it uh, with the PC without um, without touch. So uh, right now you can use the mouse wheel to go up and down, but there is no scroll bars just yet. Exactly. So if you have a touch device, it will be no problem. Um, speaking about the nodes themselves, we can click into them and now we have uh, parameters and the node itself. So for example, we can choose the color and we can say it is the four hours interval in which this node gets executed. So four hours, there you go. Just I don't need to save anything. It's it's saved right away. So uh, it's oh, something. Ah, I didn't press OK. So there you go. Interval. It's different now. If I OK. Uh, if I want to change the name, for example, to four hours interval, I will just do it and then press the check. It's very important because some things don't need uh, to be checked. For example, if I change something here, but if I change the name, I need to check. All right, so I have the four hours interval in red and I'm pretty happy with that right now. But um, maybe I want this to double this for some reason. So I can duplicate the node. We'll open it up and put the one, let's say, for example, two hours interval. So, oh, it's, uh, I didn't, oops, didn't press the check. There we got it. So I can execute this uh, on a different level. So, for example, in this case, we don't need uh, two starters. So, for example, I want to keep this, but I don't want to use it. So I can deactivate the node and just use this one. And now I feel it's really um, not needed anymore. So I can also delete it from here. And if I want to start this right now, I can execute it as well. 
and now it's just got executed and I got the data now which is obviously empty okay so this one hasn't been executed so let's do it right on top here is the execute button as well so this function thing I will get into the depth of this function node later but just uh, for the sake of this tutorial uh, we have this vari variable here and I will just uh, put another one my variable to execute it once again and then show the table and the JSON because node is based on JSON processing so it needs JSON as a uh, for for the start and it will um, uh, in the end uh, there will be also JSON as an output so input and output JSON and everything in between the workflow will be JSON too even if you use XML it will be an XML within JSON so JSON is very important in this um, and I just created a very basic JSON with two content vari variables or param parameters my variable and my variable two and this is the JSON view but sometimes you uh, find it much more um, easy to read when you use the table so there is a table feature as well which shows me my variable and my variable too all right so what else we have this node tab again we all always have this in this in these nodes uh, there's a node color we did it before so this is not not new you have the option to retry on fail or to continue on fail as well you can set them um, very interesting about this um, field I will show you in the next one because I will just use another function I will just copy it and just for the sake of this tutorial because we have inputs now and we can use for example I'll delete this and we can use um, the data of the previous node in this one if I use this um, these wheels I don't know how, the, how they are called in English so I can um, oh no I can do this right now here okay let me see ah it's a uh, wrong example I need to take another one so for example this I take the set and I add a value of string and I put it uh, for example data and the value now I can use this I can add an expression now what does that mean I have the expression window here and now I can select one of the previously processed or received variables I have the current node and I have nodes in general now I know there's no data in the two hours interval but I know there's data in the function item so I'll just open this up I have the output data JSON and for example I use the my variable too and now the expression uh, gets put here if it's green it means um, there uh, is data to work with and we see the result as well so now I have this data one and if I execute it guess what I have my variable I have my variable two and I have data which is my new parameter and which gets added to this entire thing now guess what happens if I change the my variable or my variable two it is actually so let's do it my variable two this is exciting <clears throat> and I will process this again and it shows me this is exciting and I will set this there you go
go. We have my variable one, my variable two, and the data variable. So this works with the uh, set vari uh, with this uh, with the data of the previous variable automatically if I select it. Now, for example, in the set, um, I can keep uh, I can keep only set. So this will delete all else. So I have only this data left. All right, this, this concludes it for this video. Um, in the next video, we will take a look at a very basic no, uh, workflow, which will be uh, featuring this webhook functionality to receive JSON data. We will use a very basic function to manipulate this data, and we will send it through an HTTP request uh, to another server. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have comments, questions, please, please post it in the comment section below and see you in the next video.